Hi guys, it's Blakey for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. Okay, you've walked to your target. You have arrived at your destination, like we talked about. You had started at your, your start point. You had orientated the map. You had put the compass edge up there and drawn a line between your start point and your ending point. You have now arrived at your point, let's say here. Okay, I want to remember this. If it's not something that's really obvious, I may hang a marker up in a tree, something like that. Now I can go explore the area and come back to this marker. Now, I want to return where I started, or there's another point on the map that I want to go to, okay? That's where we start the process again. I've come back to my destination point, which is now my starting point. I'm going to take my compass, and the first thing I'm going to do to speed this process up is I'm going to turn around and I'm going to box the compass like that. So now that I know that my compass is, my, my bezel ring is set north, my compass is now boxed north and I am facing north. Now I am oriented to the map. The top of the map is north to me right now. Now, using my direction that I want to go, I'm going to kneel down. See if I can do this without having it. Nope, we'll have to lower it. Hang on one second. Okay, I kneel down. I put it on top of my knee. Now the compass is boxed. I know I'm facing north. I've got my map turned. Sorry about the helicopter guys, big training going on. The north of the map is straight ahead of me. All right, now, I turn the edge of my straight edge in the direction I want to go, just like before. This is the direction of travel. I line it up from what was my destination back to my starting point, or to my next point. I line it up, I grab the bezel ring and I turn it where it is due north, and it is lining up with my start and ending position on the bottom straight edge, and the top of the compass is now pointing north and is lining up with the north-south lines. Now, my compass is programmed. I'm ready to use it. I stand up. Okay, I stand up. Now, remember, declination. Here, in my place in Alabama, as I said before, I have to take from the map, add to the compass. So I have to add three degrees west. One, two, three. Now, I box the compass. That is my correct heading. Now, if I'm in an area where I've got a little bit of a view. I can see. Now I want to use this as a sighting compass or my other compass as a sighting compass. I bring it up. I pick a target over yonder on the other side. My new compass heading is going to be, let me go ahead and box that so I know exactly where I'm at. My new compass heading is My new heading is 300 degrees. I look up through the siding window and I pick a target over yonder in the distance. Let's say there's a, a field or a clearing here I need to go through. I look up, I sight it, make sure I am on 300. It's dead center of my little applicator. I look at my siding wire and I pick that tree right there. Put my compass down, walk to that tree. When I get to that tree, I'll get beside that tree. If I can see another clear area, then I'll shoot across. If not, that's when I go to boxing the needle, like I got here. I put my compass down in my hand flat. 
I box the needle and I walk toward my destination. Now, notice in this little exercise I have not talked about pacing or time. That's because you're going to have to set up your pacing and time to find out how far. And that's going to be the next video. We'll get to that in just a minute. But for right now, what we've talked about is how to dead reckon navigate. In the sketch map, I told you how to do it. We're using time. We're going to use that again. But we also need to know distance. By setting up on the map my A to B, putting my bearing on the map, aligning myself, the map and the compass, as I've just showed you, kneeling down and setting up my new course, turning and setting my bezel ring, standing up, add three, because that's what I have to add to it, my compass is now programmed. Now all i got to do is box the compass and walk toward my destination. And remembering to grab my marker up here. Markers are helpful in the early stages of navigation. I like to carry strips of bright orange um, canvas that I get from the fabric store, about you know, foot, foot and a half long, maybe an inch wide. Something I can tie into a tree right quick or something. Something's going to attract my attention at a good range. Because let's say I come to an obstacle. Okay, I was going to deal with this later, but we'll deal with it right now. I've got my bearing, and I'm coming up, and I come up to something like a swamp, a big ditch, a cliff face, something I don't want to go through. I need to go around. If I can look on the other side, I shoot me a bearing to that tree, walk around the obstacle, and go to that tree. But what if it's not that easy? What if it's a, a big pond or a lake, and I can see kind of around that way, that's where I take one of the markers and put right here. Now I'll walk around till I'm on the far side and I'm in direct line with this. Now how do I know I'm on the right path? Well, from right here, my compass bearing is, I'm gonna make up one here, guys. Let's say my compass bearing is 90. The opposite end would be 270. So therefore, when I get to that side, I should line up and be able to shoot a compass bearing of 270 looking at that marker and be back on my original line. See? Now I can turn around and come to my original bearing. Now I don't even really have to adjust the compass. And I'll show you how I'm about to do that. Stay with me. I'll adjust the camera and I'll okay, show guys. you. Be right back. Just for understanding let's just say that this is my compass bearing i have boxed the compass and i have been walking to this because this is my direction of travel arrows i have kept it boxed and i've walked to here and then i encounter that obstacle i cannot go around and i need to somehow mark my trail circle around it and come back how do i know what my opposite is that's very simple box the compass on your heading and look where the south part of the needle is pointing that is your 180, that's your back azimuth or your return course right there. Now, when in doubt, you know, let's say I've got to my destination and I want to turn around immediately and come back. All I have to do is box the compass, turn the bezel ring, and now box the southern end of the needle. When I turn around, my compass is now boxed, and I am in the correct alignment to walk straight back. So let me do that again to show you. I have boxed the compass, and I have walked on this heading till I have reached my destination. I am now going to return. I get, make sure my compass is lined up. The needle is boxed in the, the doghouse. Holding the compass steady, I'm going to turn my bezel ring 180 degrees until... I have boxed the southern needle facing the north indicator or whatever my opposite was. But I, I'm just holding it still and I turned the bezel ring so I've now boxed the southern needle. Now when I turn 180 degrees for my back azimuth, my 
North is now back in the compass, back in the doghouse, and I am facing my correct heading to walk back out. Stay with me. Okay. Be right back. So, I have showed you how to shoot an azimuth, how to shoot a back azimuth, how to turn the dial and turn the compass around down and dirty and go right back to where I come from. It's how to reverse direction with a compass. I have told, talked about sighting on a target, just simply lining it up, pointing at it, figuring out what your bearing is, walking to it. If I've got a big obstacle in the way, mark my present position, because this is where I'm going to come back to to go home. So this is like I'm coming out of a hallway into a big room. I want to mark this hallway, not that one, not that one, this door. So I'm going to put me a marker right here. Now it might be a couple of sticks. I just stand up in a quick and down and dirty tripod. Something to mark my position right here because this will be where I'm going back up the hallway to go home. I've got this obstacle in front of me. I need to go around. It's big. I shoot a bearing onto that tree over there. I put a marker on this, and I walk all the way around. When I get up to that tree and I can see this marker, this marker will be my back azimuth from my present position, my exact opposite, my boxing the southern needle to here. And that tree will be my original path going that way. So I line up on it, shoot my new azimuth, and go. Hedge hopping. Small little jumps allow you to make mistakes and it not be a big deal. The bigger the jump, the more precise you have to be. When you're only talking, say, a couple of hundred meters, it's not a big deal to be off just a grunt because you're going to get there and you're going to have to look around a little bit to find your target anyway. It is a big deal when you're talking about kilometers, 20 or 30. I don't even attempt anything that big, especially in my dense cover. I do short little hops, usually in the 100, 200, 300 yard, meter range. And that is to keep me straight, keep me honest, I call it. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about time, distance, and measurement on the map. Stay with me, guys. We're going to get through this. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.